Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. It's Wednesday and that means we're talking about tools today. And today we're talking about a straddle square. I'm actually gonna show you how to make one. Now, if you don't know what a straddle square is, it is a tool that simply slides over the piece of a uh, piece of wood and something you're working on and you can draw a line from one side to the other and get a perfect accurate precision all the way across. Now typically you'd use a regular square, you draw a straight line then try to match it up on either side which can be time consuming and a bit of a pain. So I designed this straddle square and uh, 3D printed it out. This one I talked about in a video previously. It is a uh, PLA printed uh, square with a uh, infused uh, carbon fiber and on mine I put a 45 degree angle on one side it just made sense to be able to do that and I actually have a, uh, an idea for a version that's fully adjustable so we'll see that in the future now originally the first time I ever saw a straddle square I, I was um, it was referred to as a saddle square to me and that's what the gentleman called it and it was a much larger version that was used for timber framing. Now it was uh, had a finished name on the tool and I looked like crazy to try and find it online, but I couldn't. So if any of you old timers or uh, guys that have been around for ages, you know how to where to find it. I would be really curious um, if you've seen these before or some feedback would be great. So this one right here is a big one and I built this out of Delrin. We're gonna make this today and it's I can see this being very handy in the shop. Now to, to build this was pretty simple. Uh, I cut one piece that was four inches wide and a little over 12 inches long. And then I marked some two and a half inch sections out of uh, off of each end. And then I cut a 45 degree angle on both of those two and a half inch sections to match that line. And then I just came back and chopped those, those sections off, leaving the center. It's nice when you're cutting angles like that to have a little extra to get those real precise. And if your, tape, if your chop saw is set up right, you can get some pretty accurate uh, cuts on the chop saw. So that center section I went over and I cut one and a three quarter inch pieces off at each end of it. And then I left the center piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and stand those up. And I've got a bad camera angle here. I wish it was a little bit better, but um, I'm epoxying those to the little bottom piece or the little angle piece there. And I taped the top together to kind of hold everything taut and tight, made sure it was square, and then just, I didn't clamp it, I just let it sit and dry. Now, I'm gonna add some screws to this for some strength. I tapped a hole out uh, with a 82 degree countersink, and then I came back and enlarged the, the first part of the hole so the screw wouldn't, would pass right through it. And then I elongated the hole with a smaller bit down deeper so the screw had plenty of room to go. When you're working with Daryl and you wanna make sure there's lots of room for your uh, screws to go in. And I, I did that on both of those tall pieces so it would um, hold them in place because this thing's gonna get you know used and abused and knocked around and I want as much security as possible. And I'm not sure how well Delrin um, adheres with epoxy. I've never done it before, so. On the second one, the middle center piece, I just cut a two inch section, section out, sanded it out, and then I took the other angle piece and epoxied it to it. And once that had dried, I came back and just drilled a hole through that middle section down into the bottom angled piece. I hope this is making sense. And then um, ran a screw down in it. Not all the way, I left the head sticking up a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm gonna cut that off here in a minute. And I did the same on the other side over there. So there's two screws going into that section. And then I came back with the angle grinder and uh, cut those heads off. And I didn't get them perfectly flat, but I got them close. I came back later with a sander and sanded it all out. The next I'm marking a hole in the center that I'm drilling a 5 16 hole into. And then I came back and tapped that out. Now that's later going to accept a star knob that'll act like a clamp and tighten that all down. So that's pretty much close to done. With that, I came back over to the saw and uh, tightened up a couple of the spots that had uh, been left over hung, overhang and uh, added the star knob and then I was testing it out. Now, the nice thing about this type of a square is it has that really high shoulder. So if you're using a marking knife or in my case, I'm just using one of those little breakaway knives, um, you can get real accurate uh, lines by using that shoulder to rest upon. And I did the same thing with the 3D, the smaller 3D printed version. I left it with a high shoulder. So when I'm using my marking knife, or in this case, the utility knife, I can get those really accurate lines. Um, and that's less important when you're doing some furniture work. Now, Greg over at Greg's Garage had mentioned that he was having trouble getting 
45 degree angles laid out properly on tube steel because in tube steel you usually have that round corner which made really a lot of sense to me and this would have been very handy in a situation like that especially if you're doing two by fours or in this case the rounded over uh, metal steel so that my friends, in a, in a nutshell, is a straddle square, and uh, they're very handy to have around in the shop. I am working on a new design for one that's fully adjustable to adjust to any angle, and I am looking into having it manufactured, so you can look for that in the future. Uh, thanks a lot for watching today, guys. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.